Welcome back to another edition of Coffee Time. Uh, I hope that uh, you're enjoying the series so far. Today we're going to look at another of uh, one of my favorite websites, uh, favorite tools to use, which is Digo. Uh, one of the nice things about the web as it's evolved over time uh, is that it has become more and more a device that brings information to you as opposed to you having to go out and find it. When I first started using the web back in the 80s, you had to log on, um, find websites, took forever to locate what you needed, search wasn't that great. But today, you can set things up to automate or to share and collaborate with other people who will go find stuff for you. And then and it will just come to you. And Digo is one of those tools that helps that happen. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee, let's look at Digo, and, uh, and then after the break, we'll look at how we can use it in the classroom. Here we go. One of the things that uh, the web helps us to do as teachers uh, is to be able to curate information, to be able to save it, harness it, sort it, file it. Uh, on, on the web, we call tagging it. We give it certain attributes that we can go back and find it again later. Sometimes we can do that simply by bookmarking it and uh, adding it to a bookmark in our browser. We can go back and search through those and find it. But I really like putting it out on um, a, a social bookmarking site like Digo because in that, uh, in that arena, we can share that with our friends and others that, uh, that are part of our group. So we're going to look at Digo for just a minute, and I'm going to pull up my library. When you create an account, uh, you get a library. You start a library, and you start collecting things and saving it to this website. And you will add tags. And so you'll see here, um, here are the tags that I have started to save over here on the left-hand side. And I've got a few sites out here that are in some of these tags. And then I've got more down here that are directly school-related where I, you can see I have a number of other sites out there. So if I click on a tag like math, it's going to bring up every site that I have saved into my library with the math tag. Now you'll notice that um, I may have, uh, across here on the bottom, I may have added several tags. If in this very first site has a tag of smart board, interactive, math, reading, brain teasers, music, holidays, etc. Because I don't have to remember the website. I don't have to remember the URL. I don't even have to remember the name of it. All I have to know is I saved this math site out there somewhere. I can go back in, look at all the math sites I saved, and I can start to and I can start to find it. But more importantly to me than just being able to save my own stuff is this thing of starting a network. And so when I have a network, we'll see if we can pull this up, you'll see that I have people that I follow have also saved things. Now these are people that that uh, I have some like interests. Uh, most of us are members of the Discovery Educator Network. And so when they save something, it's probably something I might be interested in. And so I add that person to my network. And then I can go out and see what have they been doing. Maybe I can find something that I need from what they've done. And then I've also got my groups. And groups are a, a set a system of of people that have joined together to save things to a group um, so that you can go in and search that group. And, and for me, I get that information sent to me by email in two groups that I have. Uh, the Digo and Education group that you see there at the top, I get an email from that group every day. I could set that up to get it every week. But every day, whoever has saved something to that group, those websites come to me in an email first thing in the morning and I can look and see what they've done. In addition, the Discovery Educator Network that was started by uh, Jen Dorman, that has been going on for years, and that still comes to me every single day. People are adding to that group things that are of interest to teachers who are trying to integrate technology. So um, with that in mind, one last thing that I'll show you is how easy it is to save something to Digo. So let's say that I have this website here, and I want to save this website into um, my library. 
you'll see I have a toolbar across the top over here on the left hand side it says Digo and I could log into my site here if I wanted to um, this toolbar is available for several browsers and so I'm going to click here where it says bookmark and you'll see that the title comes up the URL is already here I could add a description if I like and this is where I'll tag it and I'll just tag this one as iPhone iPhoneography photos camera um, all those kinds of things I could add a lot more whoops I could add a lot more but we'll start there um, so let's come in here it already recommends a few things so let's put that in there since I messed it up iPhoneography camera those kinds of things now I could save it and it would be just in my network or I could share it to one of these groups out here that I've either started or I'm a member of and not only will it save it to my library but everybody else would see it as well and so it's just that simple click save boom it's in my library now after the break we'll come back we'll show you a little tip about how to use this in the classroom because I think you're gonna like it okay so <clears throat> we've looked at a little bit about Digo what it can do what kind of things you can save any website on the web put it in here save it into your library search it by tags okay that's great for me as a teacher maybe I've established a group and I have several teachers maybe we've established a group for all the teachers in in our individual school and every teacher in that school when they run across a website that they particularly like and they think might be of benefit to teachers at that school they can share it with the group and every teacher in the school now has access to that site because one person thought it was important so that's one way that Digo can be used in school but I also have up here you'll see I have the teacher console you can apply as a teacher to get an account an educator account in Digo that will allow you to set up a class and in that class you can add your students and the nice thing about adding your students to Digo is they don't have to have an email address to make it happen so no matter what grade you're teaching if you have kids that are on the web and they are searching they're doing research for a project or um, you know you have them learning how to do something on the web and they're they're searching together you can set your class up uh, in Digo and these students when they find something can share it with that class and now every student has access to that in addition you yourself could set up a number of sites that your students might need for a particular project tag it with the name of that project when your students go into their account they search for that tag all of those sites that you've saved are available to them to go out and research and do whatever it is they need to do um, to make that project work so no more having to say write this down find this URL when you go home do this search on Google you have it curated already in your classroom one other thing I'll point out here as we're talking is this section on tools because there is an app for the iPad there is an app for the iPhone there's an app for Android there's a number of other things that are available here you'll see here the Digo toolbar um, works on Internet Explorer and on Firefox unfortunately evidently not Safari um, so you can put the the toolbar in that I have at the top um, there are some other things down here at the bottom where you can uh, find all kinds of things here to work with Digo so I think that you'll find this helpful and if you haven't already started curating the websites that you like that you find and you, you want to be able to find them again Digo is a great place to start. So let me know what you think, and if you need any help, give me a call.